Hello everybody, I'm Nick and with the release of the first preview of .NET 10 we got a bunch of new features that will be in the next .NET version and I want to start taking a look at them and as I was scanning the list I saw one that really piqued my interest because it has to do with ordering, mainly string ordering and comparing as well and it simplifies a lot of my use cases, I know current and past ones and it probably applies to you too if you're doing anything with strings this would apply to you. Just let me show you what I mean. I have this program over here, just simply console application, and I'm using .NET 10 Preview 3 in this case, but if you download the latest official preview of 1, you will have this feature. Now, let's just say I have something as simple as wanting to compare two strings that contain a number. So imagine you just passed some string and you want to extract a number out of that string and then compare it to another number of another string, but you don't want to do int.parse to just pass them into an integer and then check them. And you want to do something like this, let's say, where 7 equals 7. If I run this, as you would expect, this will say true because strings are reference types, but they're compared on their value. So they behave like value types, which is why we have a true here. However, on a numeric level, 07 and 7 is the same. If you were to compare an integer with value 07 and integer with value 7, you'd get true. However, if I run this, then this will just return false, which makes sense because they are different strings. That's because the default string comparer just checks the characters themselves. If I was to make this a bit more clear and I said comparer equals string comparer dot current culture, and I just use the current culture comparer, and I said comparer dot equals, and I pass down the two values like this, then this will basically do the same thing. It will give me false because they're different values. However, with .NET 10, I can do the following. I can say string comparer dot create, and I can pass down a culture. In this case, it's going to be culture info dot current culture. And then I'm also going to pass down compare options. So I can say compare options and I have a bunch of options, but now I also have this numeric ordering one. And if I do that and I use this numeric ordering in the comparer and I run it, then these two will return true because on a numeric level, they are the same value. You don't have to do any parsing. You don't have to do anything. This will just work out of the box for you. And this doesn't really stop here because yeah, if you're comparing strings like this, this will work. But what if we take it a step further with a more practical example, which is probably something you would have. Let's say I have a list of operating systems, Windows 8, Windows 10, and Windows 11. And I want to loop around them. So I'm going to put this collection over here, and I'm going to say OS in collection. And I just say console.writeLine OS. Of course, if I just run this like this, it's going to say 8, 10 and 11. In fact, let me just quickly shuffle it a bit to make it a bit more unpredictable, but this will say 8, 11 and 10, just for the sake of looking at this, just to make sure nothing is changing. We're getting exactly the order. However, you can go here and say dot order, and that's a method you can just use. And if you just use this, what do you expect the order to be? How do you think C sharp will order this by default? Well, if I just run it, you'll see that it goes 10, 11 and 8 because they are the characters and they are ordered based on their characters. However, the order method accepts this comparer object. So now if you pass down this comparer, what's going to happen is even though you have strings like text in the actual string over here, it will still take the numeric value of each string into account. And even though it's not in the beginning, but it's in the end, it will still be taken into account, assuming the first card is match, and the difference is the numbers. So now you don't have to pause anything and trying to sort of loop around it based on split, get the second item, pause it into an integer, order it, and then print it. You can just use this directly, which is just brilliant. It simplifies so much code, not just because it's complicated code to write, because it's not complicated code to write and do this manually, but if you want to do it efficiently, with spans and proper parsing and a bunch of other stuff, then you just have to write extra code that you no longer have to write. Just pass down the comparer and it's there. And I guess if you just keep adding things in here, you're going to see the rest printed. The same rest, by the way, as the rest API course we have on Dome Train, which is free to enroll until the 8th of March. You can get one month access to just finish this five hour course. 
link below don't miss it and this comparer is not limited to just these two things you can actually use comparers in all sorts of places another example would be if i had like a hash set and i said new hash set of strings but i can also pass down here a comparer why do i do that well if i don't have the comparer and say that this by default just contains like a random number then if i say console dot right line hash set contains and i pass down this value which numerically would be the same of course it is not in this context so i'm going to get false but because the hash set can actually allow you to provide a comparer here now the same comparison logic will be used here which is awesome you are very unlikely to write this type of code manually you would probably have some value you want to check you contain and then you would have passed this numeric value by something else maybe extracting may maybe from a different source and so on but just the ability to do this is really neat and i really want to know down in the comments where do you think this comparer logic makes total sense because these are the three examples provided by microsoft and i can think of some myself but do you have a use case for this that you really think makes sense i'm not quite sure and i actually have to take a look at the blog post to see this but i am pretty confident that the dictionary string end over here let's just create a new dick dictionary you can see that we have i guess we have an order method but can i pause something in the constructor i can i can say compare which I'm assuming means, and I haven't tested this, but if I just initialize this with this random number again, and then say that the value of this random number is its integer representation of that same random number, then if I say console.writeline dictionary contains key, and then I provide this number, I'm assuming this will say true. And it does. Can you even retrieve it? That would be cool. So what if I say retrieve this? Would that return the raw version of that? So it's going to map it? It will. That is awesome. The things you can do with this is great. Yes, this is a bit confusing, as you said, especially if the comparer is up here and you can't see exactly what it's doing. But it's really neat that you can do this. Then I'm assuming that if you try to set a value over here and you say that this value now is just some other random number then this will override it and you're gonna get the new number let me just for security sake or just peace of mind sake try to get the original number will it be overridden nope it actually works for both this and this so basically these two keys now have the same value that is crazy i really want to know down in the comments what you think of this is this confusing does this make sense this part if i see in code i will question it but the thing is again it's unlikely you're going to write these strings in there manually they're meant to be extracted so i guess i get it well what do you think leave a comment down below and let me know well that's all i had for you for this video thank you very much for watching and as always keep coding